box. And Cowboy Dale Brown, who is fighting tonight for the Cruiserweight Canadian Championship against Willard Lewis. Tonight's gala, a presentation of Le Casino de Montréal and Video A. Montreal, the week of the Canadian Grand Prix of Formula One, is the occasion of many great events and festivities. Tonight, KO Mania Fight Night is no exception. We have to present to you a great schedule of boxing, of course. Welcome to the Movie Network. Tonight, two of the most promising Canadian welterweights and a Canadian title fight, which could be billed the pugilistic version of the Battle of Alberta and the Mecca of Hockey live from Molson Center. Of course, tonight we will see Canadian champ of the welterweight, Hercules Kevalos, fighting Wayne Boudreau. Also, another rising, rising star of the welterweight Canadian division, Fatih Misawi faces Ron... And, of course, the line of the evening, Dale Cowboy Brown faces Willard Red Thunder Rock Lewis for the Canadian cruiserweight title, a 12-rounder that promises a lot of action. Without any more presentations, here's Dino Sisto and the rest of the bunch for tonight's Fight Night KO Mania, live from Molson Center. Well, thank you very much, Charles Andre Marchand. Indeed, I am Dino Sisto, alongside Michael Strange, the Canadian Olympian. And welcome to the Molson Center here on Formula One Weekend. We have three terrific fights for you. A Canadian championship belt on the line, a battle of Alberta. It features Dale Brown, a Montrealer, uh, and certainly he was born and raised in Calgary against an Edmontonian, Willard Lewis, the defending champion. I'm looking forward to this one, Mike. Yeah, this is going to be a great matchup both from Alberta they've known each other for probably the last 10-15 years even when they were an amateur they've never faced each other before and uh, they don't really like each other so it's gonna be the battle of Alberta so no matter what happens tonight the title's going back to Alberta another Edmontonian Ron Pashak inside the ring tonight against Fatih Masawi he puts his undefeated 8-0 record on the line Fatih Masawi really the total package here oh, in he's a great boxer um, he was a great amateur won a bronze medal at the Olympics in 1996 and looking forward to see him uh, perform again tonight there's a lot of concern or has been a lot of concern over Hercules Cavellos and how many punches he has taken in these fights lately well they've been working hard with Russ Amber and expect Certainly, Hercules Cavellos to come out a lot stronger here tonight against his opponent, Wayne Boudreaux. Yeah, supposedly they've been working a lot in, in the gym of, uh, on his defense, and Hercules uh, coming off an impressive victory over um, Fitzroy Vanderbilt for the Canadian title, and then uh, uh, fifth round stoppage last month here in Montreal. So, uh, looking forward to seeing that match. Tale of the tape, age 29 for Boudreaux, age 25 for Cavellos. The reach advantage Cavellos, and the height advantage Cavellos. Yeah, and you better watch out for that beautiful left hook by Cavellos to the body. Let's go to Chris Gauthier, our inside the ring announcer. Membre de l'équipe olympique canadienne à Atlanta 1996 et champion canadien des mi moyens. Ladies and gentlemen, member of the Canadian team at the 1996 Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia, and Canadian welterweight champion de Montréal from Montreal, Hercules Kivalo. Gentlemen, you both got your instructions in the dressing room. Touch up, good luck. Protect yourself all the time, eh? Cavallos in the solid black trunks with a record of 16 and 0. Ten of those 16 wins ending up in a knockout. Wayne Boudreau, 25, 18 and 0, 14 knockouts. Boudreau also in the solid trunks, black. Only differential here, Cavellos is wearing the white and black shoes and Boudreau in the black shoes. Yeah, and Boudreau has quite a, a lot more experience than the police. He's uh, you know, had over 50 fights now and uh, he's fought guys like uh, Jay, Jesse James Leha and Hector Camacho, so they can't take this guy for granted. Speaking with Russ Amber prior to tonight's fight and he wants his 
fighter. Cavellos to come out strong here. Throw a lot of punches early. You know, Cavellos was told in the past to sort of relax and, and take it easy, and he went a little too far with that. Was a little lack yeah, of Yeah, he's in the first really tentative in, in the first couple of rounds, and uh, you know, he was losing the first two or three rounds, and it's, it's hard to play catch up after that. Cavellos against the ropes. Boudreau in the center of the ring, and Cavellos comes in with a left hand that got through the gloves. First good punch of the fight. Now Boudreau over the top misses. Double cut there. A little right hand on the part of Cavellos. Yeah, already Cavellos has shown a, a lot more improvement over, over the past couple of fights because he's, uh, he's a lot he's doing a lot quicker and he's come out strong. Usually he would just dance around and uh, let his opponent take it to him for the first couple of rounds. Boudreau from Marrero, Louisiana. Cavellos from right here in Montreal. Former Canadian Olympian. As you can see over the right there on the left shoulder, he has the Canadian uh, the Olympian five rings. Yeah, you can tell he's very proud of uh, being a Canadian Olympian. Only prior to the fight, he didn't do anything extraordinary. Did not train out of Montreal or outside Montreal. He trained right here in this city in anticipation for tonight's bout. He's got a lot of experience in his corner with uh, Russ Ham, who works with uh, um, you know, such greats as the, the Grant Brothers. Well, congratulations to Russ Amber. He is the president of the Quebec Olympic Boxing Federation. We were discussing that prior to tonight's bout as well, and we'll give you a few more details as we move along here. But Cabello's firing that left jab, keeping Boudreaux away. We'll see if he comes in with a 1-2-3 combination here early in this fight. Oh, a nice well, right up there. Yeah. I'd like to see that from Cabellos. And I think we see him a lot more aggressive here in the first round. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way Cabellos is showing a lot more lateral movement now. And that's great for his defense. It's tough to get hit. If you keep moving. You know, it's fine and dandy to study your opponent, but sometimes you get into this funk where you're studying and not throwing very many punches, and that was the problem with Cabellos. Uh, no problem in round number one, of course. We will hear from Kijutra, our ringside judge throughout, but definitely I thought Cavellos had the best in he, round one. Yeah, he definitely had the edge. It's still a uh, little bit of a feeling out round, but uh, Cavellos planted uh, a lot more punches. 12-round decision over Fritz Vanderpool gave him the Canadian title. Very proud moment. Terrific fight, too. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was terrific, not so terrific. You know, there's a, a lot of a lot of clinching, a lot of wrestling involved, and uh, I'm sure uh, Fitzroy would like to get another crack at uh, at Cavellos. So we might see that rematch in the future. Are you suggesting it was a brawl? Um, it was more of a wrestling match, I think, than a <laughs> brawl. Inside the corner with Cavellos. As we see, Cavellos takes the first round, 10-9, according to our ringside judge, Kijutra. Round two underway. Let's go to Guy Jutra so that we can get first-hand analysis of that first round. Guy? Yeah, Dino, there wasn't much, too much action in the first round. They just studied each other. Uh, I gave the 10-9 to uh, Kivellis. However, uh, I expect that uh, the fireworks are going to start a little later on. I just think that the style of Boudreau is going to be too tempting for Kivellis to uh, not to go in there and slug it out. So I anticipate the fireworks to start any time now. Thank yeah. you very much, Keen. I think we're seeing a better Wayne Boudreau here early in round two. Yeah, he's coming out attacking right away. And like he said, yeah, sometimes Hercules gets sucked into that brawl, the brawling style, you know, especially when you have a guy like Boudreau coming right at him. Right now, Hercules working the body. He's at best when he works the body. Works the left jab to the ribs, a specialty of his. Of course, when he does throw that jab to the ribs, the hands go down on the opponent, and then, if he prefers, he can hit. Hunt. That's right. Dig down that left hook to the body, the right hand will come down, and the left hook to the head. Okay, break. I like the way Herc's throwing that uppercut all the time, especially Boudreaux's coming in with his head low. Hercules now with a left hand, trying to keep Boudreaux away and try to set up that right hand. And there it is. And Boudreaux 
Use the left hand to deflect that right punch. Over the top on the part of Boudreaux, missed wildly. Right, right. Bring him up. The hook is, uh, his arcs are really well right now. He's in a good lateral movement. Setting everything up with the jab, which is very important. Boudreaux has lots of experience. This kind of fighter that Hercules needs to meet right now, a guy with a lot of experience. Maybe go to school with him and come away with something more than just a win. That's right, get up in those rankings in the world. Boudreaux has Hercules up against the ropes, working the body. Good counter punch here on the part of Cavellos, not only one. Good right hand followed by a left. Cavellos is on oh. fire and Boudreaux's down. It's a beautiful up uppercut and then followed by left hook. Boudreaux's back up. Seven, eight. Well, he's been with the best, so I'm sure he's a very durable guy. left hand there by Boudreaux as Cavellos came in, but Boudreaux's off balance, he's hurt. The onus is on Cavellos here to finish him off before round two, but there's only a dozen seconds to go. Yeah, I definitely think Boudreaux might be getting saved by the bell here. He goes down to the back of the corner and uh, regroup. That'll put Cavellos up by three, just two rounds into this fight. A terrific round by Hercules Cavallos. He floored Wayne Boudreaux in that round, and we'll have to see what happens in the third and as we check in with the corners and, of course, some of the highlights of round two. Yeah, it was, it was a great round for... I don't know if we're going to see the knockdown now. Seeing Cavallos keeping him away with the left hand and setting up the right. Good left hand right there. That staggered There's Boudreaux. There is a right uppercut there. And that's a very comfortable position to be in. Cavello's three points ahead right now, going in the third round. Michael, Russ told me, watch my fighter tonight. Early in this fight, he's going to come out very strong. He came out stronger in round number two and really took the fight to Boudreaux. Sorry, strong in round number one, but really took the fight to Boudreaux in round number two. And this is round number three. Yeah, Cavellos looks uh, more determined than ever. Cavallo sneaks in the first left of the round. And you haven't seen Cavallo's get hit at all, basically, in the, in the first two rounds. Good point. Boudreaux a lot more tentative here in the third, and understandably so. There isn't a more humbling experience than a knockdown. Surprised Cavellos isn't going after him more here at the start of the third. Um, I don't think I don't think he wants to get in a big slugging match. You know, he, he had uh, Pedro had a minute to rest, so you can't take him for granted. I think he's he's doing a smart thing here, just boxing and picking him apart right now. Cavellos leading with that left hand, keeping his distance from Boudreaux. And why not? Cavellos has a reach advantage. Boudreau has a lot of experience, over 40 fights, so you don't, you don't know why he's going to pull out his hat. Carlos has to be very careful on the counterpunch here. It's the kind of experience that pays off when a fighter's in trouble, you're just waiting for that one shot to get not only yourself out of trouble, but obviously maybe nail the guy who's an opponent who's maybe over anxious. And you're right, Carlos is playing the right. Taking his time, I like that. Being very patient. You rush in, you make it top. Good left hand there on the front of Cabellos. Cabellos moves in another left and bounces off the gloves of uh, And now Cabellos works the body. The new side. Oh, nice left hook. And right now it's all Cabellos again. Hercules Cabellos. Looking for the right uppercut. That time he missed. He connected in round one with that punch. Yeah. The Bujo was um, I'm going backwards when he tried to throw that uppercut, so it's very tough to hit someone other than going backwards. Just got away from the lunge and then it snapped his head up with that uppercut. You know, Sisto alongside Canadian Olympian Michael Strange, and this is the movie network.
live from Montreal at the Molson Center. A terrific fight night planned, and we have a Canadian belt on the line a little later on. Gail Brown and Willard Lewis. Now oh, Cavallos has the corner against, against the ropes, working the body. As Cavallos goes upstairs, but right now Cavallos is complaining with a low punch, and the referee agrees with him as he warns Boudreau. Three in the books. Another Strange good round ending. for Cavallos. He had a nice flurry at the end of that round. And when it's a close round, and you have that that little flurry at the end, that almost steals the round too, if it's a close round. But that one wasn't. No. As Cavallos, there's that uppercut again. No, uh, it didn't hurt. Whenever a fighter does that, trust me folks, it hurts. Here's a little flurry against the ropes. Great work by Cavallos. It's that body shot, the left hand to the body. That straightened up Boudreaux, and that's the dangerous one. But Masawi, he's up next as he goes up against Ron Pasek. Masawi, a perfect 8 and 0 oh of those eight wins, six by knockout, comes in at 157.8. Pasek at 157.2. Right now, we're watching Wayne Boudreaux and Hercules Cavellos, and it's a sweep for Cavallo so far on Dijutra's Jutra scorecard. Cavallo just has to keep doing what he's doing, just boxing smart. Well, okay, Dino, I think that uh, now that uh, her Cavallo's is on a roll, I think that he won't be satisfied just to win that fight. He wants a knockout, and I think he'd be disappointed if he doesn't get one. I personally think that uh, it's about to come in the next uh, round or two. What did you think of round three, Gizhu Tri? Round three, I sir, obviously gave it to uh, Hurt, to, so with a 10-9. So now it's a sweep for Hurt with a 10-8 in the second round. And uh, I think now that he's got his number, and uh, it's a question of time. Gizhu has Hercules Cavellos up by four. Here in the scheduled eight rounder, we are in round four, and Cavellos has his opponent Boudreaux up against the ropes, and he's punishing him. Looking for the uppercut, goes to the body with the right hand, left. And the referee jumps in. Time. What do we have? Oh, oh a little tape off the glove of Cabellus. A low blow, tape. This is breaking the rhythm here. That's for right. Cabellus. Give a little break for uh, Boudreau. Much needed one. Boudreau looks over to the corner and gets some advice. Well, he's looking for all the help he can get. <laughs> he's down by four points in the fourth round. Hurt, relatively fresh here. Yeah, he looks really fresh. No matter where you are in this country or in this world, remember, you can keep up with Interbox News at www.interbox.ca. Upcoming programs and certainly profiles on all of the Interbox fighters and some of the management people too at the website. Both of these leaning with that left. And as we take a quick look inside the room, we saw Dale Brown writing himself for tonight's final. Hercules looks so relaxed. Most relaxed I've ever seen him. <laughs> it all pays off when you come out strong. You know, when you come out strong from the start of the fight, you dictate the fight. And the trace of the fight. And you get the, the other guy's respect as well. And right now we're seeing a very different Wayne Boudreaux than we saw in that oh, first round. Totally defensive right now. Not seeing too much offense from him. Because every time he tries to attempt to, to go to his offense, he gets hit by him. Mr. Amber told me before tonight's fight that he certainly wanted to see this fighter go up a notch, a different level he expected from him, and he's seeing it here tonight. Another good right here with the right hand there. Left to the body, a right to the body. Up a cut right, and it's all Hercules again. Good right hand. Canal's hitting Boudreaux with everything he's throwing. Cavellos looks like a Ferrari. Boudreaux looks like a Sauber. 
good point with the Grand Prix coming up. <laughs> did what he had to do there in that round and that is continue dictating the fight keeping his opponent at a distance and attacking when he had the opportunity yeah he's, he's making no mistakes right now his defense is good he hasn't seen him get hit with one blow yet he's taking uh, Butro to school right now now Brown getting ready now Brown's first trainer his mother and she still trains uh, trains boxers back in Calgary. Dale will be back in Calgary next weekend. Says he'll be there for the NHL draft. Big <laughs> hockey fan. Up by five now, according to Guy Jutra, our ringside judge. Boudreau lands a first punch of the round first time that's happened in the first part of the fight that he's landed <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was trying to be kind <laughs> that was leaning in with the right and then we saw the quick head movement great reaction to get away from a possible counter punch which never came can never be too sure though you just can only fight your fight you can't really dictate the other person's fight when it comes to counter punching and just make sure that you're ready for that counter punch right no matter at the amateur level or the professional level defense is a big part of the game oh huge best offense sometimes is your defense now Boudreaux needs a knockout here and he's not showing signs of offense Hercules is you notice Cavallos he's always one step ahead of Boudreaux He's hitting him, and then Butro tries to come back with uh, a counter punch, and Hurts nowhere to be seen. Hercules looking for that uppercut again, just misses. As Butro lands left, and Hercules keeps on pounding away, fought from the outside. Now he's fighting inside. He's doing it all. Now this is the best I've seen Cabellos in a while. He needs to reach the next level, as mentioned by Russ Amber. And That's right. It's one thing to win the Canadian title, but then you got to branch off and uh, get on the world team. Same thing for Dale Brown. Dale Brown wants the Simi Giraud again. He, he fought a hell of a fight against Giraud last time. And he wants that opportunity. But first he needs the Canadian belt. And that's upcoming a little later on. It's our final Dale Brown versus Willard Lewis. Right now we are in round five of eight. Between Hercules, Cavellos, and Wayne Boudreaux. Cavellos undefeated. Pretty much doing what he wants to do in this fight. Boudreaux not showing any signs of offense at all right now. I think next time Boudreaux's in trouble, the referee might stop this fight. Because you need to fight back once in a while. Well, you know, when he takes so many shots like Boudreaux's taking right now, it's tough to, he's almost timid to, to throw any punches because he's going to get caught with more. Cavellos working the body, now moving in, again with the body, missing, and upstairs, missed, but he's got Boudreaux up against the ropes. This is when Cavellos is most dangerous, and he's pounding away. Good counter punch there on the part of Boudreaux, but look at Cavellos go. And another round for Cavallos. Oh, he completely dominated that round. Give credit to his corner. They wanted a different young man in this fight, and they worked and worked and worked until they got one, and right now it's been all Hercules Cavallos as we saw in the last round. Oh, beautiful left hook to the body there. He used to concentrate in the past. He used to only concentrate on the left hook to the body. Now he's throwing the right hand, left hook upstairs as well, and he's, he's really taking Boudreaux to score here. What I like about Cavellos, when he has Boudreaux up against the ropes, he doesn't let him slip away. No. Several times in this fight, the round has ended with Boudreaux up against the ropes and Cavellos firing punches. Well, that's a great, a great way to end the round. That's right. Cavallo still looks totally fresh right now. 
Guy Jutra, clean sweep, and of course a 10-8 score in round two because of the knockdown. Let's go to Guy Jutra, ringside judge. Guy? Yes, you know, I guess uh, the same of uh, the same thing in the last round. It's domination by uh, Herc Cavellas, and uh, I got the feeling that Herc won't be satisfied. He won't be pleased with himself unless he uh, ends up winning this fight by knockout. But people are just drooling over this, just anticipating the matchups in the months ahead with uh, Joao Chanel-Sin and Cavellos and also uh, Fatima Sawi. Oh. I think Montreal is in for a, a real, some real treats down the road. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, what advice would you give Wayne Boudreaux right now? Uh, maybe uh, choose another profession after tonight. Game <laughs> <laughs> to our ringside uh, judge. Not very sympathetic toward Boudreaux. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give him, Michael? Uh, I just think he, he needs to show more offense. And, um, you know, he keep those hands up. That, that was a time where he's got to throw some punches. When he's inside, he's not throwing any punches at all. But that, that's a, as a result of her, of, uh, her punching him so much, I guess. Well, I give Boudreaux credit for one thing. That he's lasted six rounds this far. You know, six Six round is not complete, there's 100 seconds to go, but nevertheless, he has been inside the ring with Hercules, and Great. that's what he wanted to do. Well, you figure Boudreaux needs a knockout now to win the, the match. He's down by so many points. Big time. And with all his experience, we think he's still throwing some bombs. And that's nothing against Hercules, because Boudreaux's not fighting back there, and less and less openings available to Hercules, but right now he gets Inside, good uppercut, left, again, and a right on the part of Fellas. something back and he's not doing it. Referee taking a good look here along the road. Is break? Under 30 seconds to go and he calls for a break. Boudreau doesn't even look like he wants to be in there anymore. Boudreau isn't feeling that bad center of the road. It's when he comes along the road. Yep. Just lying on the road. That's right. Oh, oh, beautiful right hand. Hello. Will he get up? Be very interested to see how the baby falls up with this. He's up, he's up. I don't know if he wants any more. Referee's gonna let him go. He's game, and again, the bell rings. Another beautiful round by Cavellos. At this point, I think it's up to Boudreaux's corner maybe to step in and say, you know what, our boxers had enough. That's a really good point. Because there will be another day you know, for Wayne Boudreaux. That's right, and basically, he has no chance of winning unless he somehow gets a huge punch and knocks uh, Cavell's out, which I don't think is going to happen. I do not believe Wayne Boudreaux has enough left in his legs to fire a big punch. No, he looks completely worn out. Where you look in the other corner, Cavell looks fresh. Look at that. Look at, look, look at the sequence here with Cavell's just firing away in terrific shape. Uppercut, left. Boudreaux doesn't know where he's coming from. He's just trying to defend against everything. There's the big, big right hand. Round seven of eight here at the Molson Center. Dino Sisto alongside Canadian Olympian Michael Strange. And this is the Movie Network. Cavellos looks like it's his first round out there. Boudreaux looks like he's done 12 already. Cavellos looks like he's in the 50th minute of a Stairmaster ride, and he normally goes 120 minutes. That's right. <laughs> Fellows 
just gets stronger and stronger as the round progresses. And then in the final 30 to 40 seconds of the round, more often than not, he has his opponent in trouble. But there, a good left hook on the part of Boudreaux on the counter punch. Yeah, I remember what I said. So maybe Boudreaux's got to start throwing some bottom and maybe one of the bottom. Another one on the part of Boudreaux on a good right hand. It's a slugfest here. Back first and center along the hook. That's what I said. Sometimes the ball gets stuck into a slugfest. And we've got one right now. That's the only time Cavellos did not appear up to par here in this fight along those ropes. I know he was the aggressor, but he took two or three shots, yeah. and it was unnecessary to do so. Well, I think because Boudreaux in the past year, I just laid there and didn't throw anything. All of a sudden, he's, he's digging down and trying to throw some stuff. I think it's... Uh, Look at Cavallo's good a little too right now. Boudreaux's in trouble along the ropes. Looking to land the counter punch, referee moves in. He says, come on, gentlemen, do this here, not there. Under a minute to go here in round seven of eight. Still to come, tonight's program. Bobby Massau and Ron Pashak next. Along the ropes, Boudreaux, we've seen this before in this fight, and firing away, Hercules Cavellos. So Cavellos is not staying that close anymore. Leading with the left, setting him up. Hoping to land that. Tap, 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 and it's really big one. Looking for the uppercut, really, with the right hand. The referee's going to have to start taking the full side of this fight. There's no reason for this to continue. Oh, good right hand. Well, as soon as you say something like that, he comes in and lands a big right hand. So, this Pico is still got, he's got a lot of heart. I still think, even though Boudreaux landed two or three counter punches here, it's almost a 10-8 round for Cabellos because yeah. he's been the aggressor and he's been landing a lot of those punches. Yeah, that was Boudreaux's best round thus far and he's still a lot standing. Yeah, good point. Number nine on the back of Russ Amber's jersey. We'll get that to that in a second. I have to assume that's for the Rocket. Big hockey fan, Mr. Amber. As we see his pupil, Hercules, along the ropes, dishing out punishment. You see Boudreaux throw a little bit off there. When he's laying against the ropes, he's punching back a little bit. And then the next time he was against the ropes, Hercules just stayed away, a little bit away from him, so he could get a little bit of uh, a reach on him. And that got caught. He didn't get catch, caught with any of those left hooks that uh, that Boudreaux threw. Two 10-8 rounds, the rest of them 10-9. And it's a clean, clean sweep, I should say, for Hercules Cavellos. Let's go to Guy Jutra, our ringside judge. Guy? Another 10-9 round in the last round, and uh, Boudreaux had the audacity to come back and give some good, meaningful punches of his own, and I think he's going to pay the price in that round for it. I think that just woke up uh, Herc, and uh, he wants to, to uh, make him pay for that. Thank you very much, Guy. The eighth and final round here between Hercules Cavellos. Oh, Cusilus out. Uh, black trunks. You see the Hercules, his name slashed across his trunks, and he's wearing the white and black shoes, while Boudreaux wearing the solid black shoes. I always remember that Willie Monroe Otis Grant fight in Las Vegas. For the NABF title, the fight almost did not take place because both fighters wanted to wear black trunks. Great! Yeah, you got to go by the different colored shoes here. <laughs> Soon we'll have to go by the tattoos. Break! Come on, pull on the first one, huh? Both guys, both guys. Cavallos wants to finish this strong. And he's firing away. Good body punch there on the part of Cavallos, and that starts the flurry. And Boudreaux's in trouble in the corner, and Cavallos keeps hammering away. Good body shot on the part of Cavallos. Boudreaux trying to fight back along the ropes. Cavallos with the left, the right. 
Yeah, Cavello smells that knockout, and he'd love to get here in the last round. I think Cavello's a little out of gas here in the eighth and final round, and understandably so, he's fired a lot of punches. Good right hand on the part of Cavellos, goes to the body, follows up with a combination. It's all Cavellos here with under a minute to go in this eighth and final round. Oh my. We saw the dismantling of Wayne Boudreaux here tonight at the hands of Hercules Cabellas. A very impressive uh, victory by Cabellas. Boy, I had myself. Oh, I think, I think it's all wrapped up. I think you're pretty safe. Here. Will it go the distance? Look at Cabellas. Oh, Ten more seconds to try to finish him. Boudreaux's just hanging on now. He wants the referee to step in. The referee does. Separates the two fighters. And this will go eight complete rounds. But Hercules Cavellos, the unanimous winner here tonight. And I expect all eight rounds on all three judges' cards to go to the North End Montrealer. Well, Russ Amber sure looks pleased with uh, Cavellos' performance tonight. Russ wanted his fighter to come out strong. Hercules came out strong in this fight and kept it up for all eight rounds, all 24 minutes. I don't think Cavellos could have did any more. It's a great victory for Cavellos because Boudreau has a lot of experience and he's fought a couple world champions. Cavellos now a perfect 17 and 0 with 10 knockouts. Boudreaux falls to 25, 19 and 0 with 14 knockouts. What a terrific performance by that young man, age 25. And this was a key fight for Cavellos because he he wanted to go up against a, an opponent with a lot of experience. What do you think Cavellos learned here tonight? Well, I think he learned that he can go with the world's best because this guy, like he's boxed Jesse James Layoff, Hector Camacho, um, Patrick Carpentier, who uh, recently fought De La Hoya about a year back. So he's been uh, in a lot uh, with a lot of world champions. This is the best that Cavellos has looked in training since the Vanderpool fight. And it's the best I think I've seen him, even though he didn't record the knockout. Yeah. It was great for Russ Amber. He didn't, he's, he's never rushed Cavellos in fighting someone really, really experienced yet. And he's just coming along and gradually and slowly. Let's go to Chris Gauthier. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the judge's decision. Le juge de Carufel remet une carte de pointage de 80-70. Judge de Carufel scores this bout 80 to 70. Le juge Leblanc, 80-70. Judge Leblanc scores it 80 to 70. Et le juge Procopio, 80-70. Judge Procopio scores his bout 80-70. For the winner, by unanimous decision, le gagnant par décision unanime, Hercules Cuvelos. They all scored it 10-9, except for two rounds, which they gave it 10-8. They all saw the fight the same way Gishu Tra saw the fight. And the way we saw it. Yeah, it's a clean sweep for Cuvelos. The two 10-8s, the two knockdowns, and the rest of the time, Cavellos just took it by Wayne Boudreaux. Well, Russ was rather busy this month, being named president of the Quebec Olympic Boxing Federation as we get closer to Australia, as my broadcast partner knows very well. And Russ will lobby for grants and for good fights for his Quebec fighters. And those pupils one day will appear on the movie network. That's right. It's nice to see Russ Amber get involved with uh, both the professional and the amateurs. Coming up August 16th, our next boxing gala. 
Fatih Masawi, Alex Sultan. That should be a dandy here, live from the Molson Center on the Movie Network. Well, that's going to be a great matchup. And of course, coming up, Fatih Masawi, so you can see for yourselves. Had a nice conversation with Alex's brother, Davey. As he's ready for September 8th as well, as we're getting closer and closer to Eric Luca and Baby Hilton Jr. I think a fight that will sell out and will catch and grab the imagination of the people here in Montreal and throughout the country. Uh, definitely will, especially after Hilton come off a nice knock of victory over Stefan Ouellette. And uh, Eric Luca's coming off a nice victory last month. 